If you're interested in people and helping them maintain their smiles, then dentistry may be the occupation for you. Dentists diagnose, treat, prevent, and control diseases and problems with the face and mouth. They work with a wide range of people, from children to seniors. We talked with a dentist to find out more. I'm Dr. Jonathan Scuba. I was born and raised in Edmonton. I've been a dentist since 2001. I attended the University of Alberta. A dentist is essentially the physician of the mouth. My job involves all of a patient's oral health care needs and integrating that oral health care with their overall health. Hi, it's Jackie to see Dr. Jonathan Scuba. Okay, Jackie, I'll let you know you've arrived. Okay, thanks. It takes into account how your overall health will affect your mouth and how your mouth affects your overall health. So that involves everything from prevention to diagnosis to treating oral disease. A typical day in the life of a dentist is a, is a busy day. I work a, an eight hour day with a one hour lunch break. I typically see about eight to twelve patients in my primary chair and I'll see a few patients for emergencies throughout the day and in addition to that I see between 10 and 20 patients for checkups. So on an average day I see probably between 30 and 40 people for, for anywhere from five minutes up to you know, the longest appointment I may have someone for is, is a couple hours. Good. Good. What grade are you this year? Five. Lots of homework in grade five, eh? Yeah. And we do all facets of, of general dentistry. We do restorative dentistry, so fillings, we do crown and bridge work, we do root canals, we do extractions, we place dental implants. Uh, everything, everything that can be done, we do. The, the first thing we do is we check um, the jaw area and the area under the cheek and, and the chin where there are lymph nodes. So if there ever was an overall health concern, oftentimes a dentist can be the first one to intercept that and feel a swollen lymph node and tell their patient, okay, you need to see your, your family doctor to make sure nothing else is going on. Well, primarily the, the main tool that we use is the one that everyone associates with the dentist, and that's the drill. That's not going to go away anytime soon, although in time maybe they'll get a little bit quieter. Uh, we use a lot of other instruments, and they're generally specific to the procedure we're doing. So if we're doing a root canal, we use a very specific root canal motor that, that allows us to, to instrument the roots of the tooth. Dentistry is changing and really entering the digital area, too. So now, rather than looking at film x-rays, we're using digital x-rays, which which is great for us because we can see them immediately. It's great for the patients because there's less radiation that they're exposed to and it really gives us clear diagnostic information. So for a crown, which is a very simple procedure that we do oftentimes, it's done when a tooth is broken down to the extent that it can't be restored with the filling anymore. So basically what we do is we use, we'll take some impressions first of all to to get the shape of the tooth to make a temporary afterwards. After that, generally what we do is we use the drill to, to take about a millimeter off the tooth in every dimension. Uh, after that, we'll use some hand instruments to place a, a cord around the gums to move the gums out of the way. Most of the work for a crown is done, is done with the hand pieces. Um, after the preparation is done, we'll take an impression of it. Uh, we'll use the impressions that we took previously to make a temporary crown, again made with the, with the drill, which is everyone's favorite instrument. And um, from there, we, we cement the crown, and in about 10 days later, the crown comes back from our technicians, and we cement it in place. Most dentists practice in private practice settings much like this one. Uh, dental offices vary in sizes from single dentist, single chair operations, all the way up to large clinics. We have 11 chairs in our clinic with, with three and soon to be four dentists and six hygienists working every day. Um, dentists, though, can work in all kinds of settings. There's dentists who work in institutional settings, so providing care for, for, for seniors in long-term care facilities, or um, there's dentists who are involved in, in academia and teach at the university. I think the most important personality traits that a dentist has to have is great communication skills and an outgoing personality. Obviously, you need to have exceptional manual dexterity and you have to be able to accumulate a really large knowledge base, but that just goes along with it. What makes a dentist the dentist that their patients like is the ability to explain what they're doing, explain the choices they have, explain the consequences of the decisions that are made, because really, it's a profession that, even though it's part of people's bodies, they really don't know what's happening in their mouth. So the, the really critical thing is to be able to, to communicate and explain what you're doing. You know, a big challenge is anxious patients, fearful patients. No one really likes going to the dentist, but, you know, we do everything we can to make it a comfortable experience. We've taken lots of patients who are terrified to come to the dentist, who had always had to be put to sleep to have dentistry. And now, it might not be their favorite place to come, but they're comfortable doing it. 
for me, it was easy to become a dentist. Growing up, my father's a dentist, and growing up, I got to see firsthand the satisfaction he got from his job. He would take me along when he would, would go see patients for emergencies after hours. What was really appealing to me was, was the lifestyle that dentistry allowed. I, I saw that my dad always had time for his family. Um, he never brought his work home with him. Once, once the day ended, life went on. I'm a normal guy, I like doing the general things that most people my age do. I love working on my vehicles and detailing vehicles. I love spending time with my wife, walking them, training the dog. Really, everything I want to get to do, I do get to do. I have lots of patients, lots of young patients who have expressed to me that they're interested in, in becoming a dentist, and I always say do it. You won't regret it. I don't think you're, you're really likely to find a career that, you know, if, if you like doing things with your hands and if you're a people person, I don't think you'll find a more rewarding career that allows you to fulfill your mental needs and your desire to be challenged in your, in your occupation, but at the same time to live your life the way you want to live it. To become a dentist, you'll need a minimum of six years of post-secondary studies, a dental aptitude test, and a structured interview. If the occupation of dentist interests you, there's more information available, including educational requirements and salary ranges in the occupational profiles on ALICE. You may also be interested in the related occupations of dental assistant, dental hygienist, or dental technologist. Learn more on the ALICE website and make the most of your future. Visit us at alice.alberta.ca.